I saw something, Chris. Ash, it's okay. You just, we're, we're both kind of out of our heads right now. I mean, we just, we gotta pull it together, okay? You with me? Chris. Let's just, let's just keep our heads. Are we going crazy down here? It, it's, it's the only place left Sam could be, Ash. I wish we could just go find everyone else and- What if Sam needs us? What if she's in trouble? Oh, God. Let's go. Into it, right? I mean, you're not getting to it. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. How did everything get so freaky around here? Doors slamming and candles lighting up out of nowhere, and that that specter or whatever. Ashley, it was. I, I I think you're kind of ignoring what's really happening here. Don't tell me you didn't see that translucent white figure just passing right by us. We we, we could be seeing things. I'm not imagining things. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I saw things too. I I I saw what happened to Josh in the shed. You know, that, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Oh, Chris, I know, I know. You know what I'm really worried about? Okay, I'm worried about Sam. What, what, what's happened to her? If there's some maniac out here, then she could be dead too. Don't say that, please, Chris. There's no handle. because of what happened with Josh. You're not paying attention. I saw it. I saw a ghost, and it looked like Hannah. It looked wait, like wait, Hannah. Wait, 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 what? Her baby bed. Jesus, Ash. What, what, what do you think? They followed us up here from the seance? I don't know. Maybe. They didn't because ghosts don't exist, okay? Oh, okay, who was talking to us at the seance, Chris? I don't know. Jump off the wall like that. Huh. Here you go. Oh, my God. There, look there, Chris. You can't tell me you can Whoa, see that. That's, uh... See? That's, uh... You do see it! I don't know. I, 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 I just... <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Chris, it's showing us the way. Furniture? No, it's a whole scene with dolls and everything. Yeah. And look, this little key. What I tell you, the ghost is helping us. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is going on here? Oh, God. It's, it's like... It's not like anything. That's us. Hiding there, waiting for Hannah. Last year. But it's, it's so accurate. I mean, that's exactly where I was sitting, and that's where Matt was. This was set up by someone. Who was there? Or someone, or something that was watching us. Maybe it's a warning. I think someone... I think someone put this here to mess with us. No, it has to be the ghost. It's trying to tell us the maniac killed Hannah and Beth. I think it's this bastard that he's, he's here trying to fuck with our heads. Why would he set this all up, Chris? He's trying to tell us that he's going to come after us all, too. <laughs> Dice! <laughs> I really think Josh is doing better now that he's out of the hospital. I saw him today. This was before, a couple months before we all came up. I saw him today and he seemed better. He's pretty upbeat, but he talked like he's been doing therapy for such a long time. I guess I didn't know, mom and dad never let on. Funny how you cannot even know your own brother. I kind of need a good cry thinking about how lonely he must feel. Everyone being together here on the mountain is gonna be so awesome. Cozy fires and hot tubs and OMG, Mike, I am so psyched to spend some time with him. I can't read this. It's so sad, Chris. Creepier. Oh, jeez. Oh, Never takes this thing off. We gotta find her. Fast. I 
I don't think I can take any more of this. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm about at my limit here, too. All I wanted to do was forget last year ever happened and- To be honest, I'm not sure what Hannah thought she was doing. Yeah, well, you know how it is when you're crushing pretty hard on somebody. Great, so you're basically saying that we put a vulnerable friend in a terrible situation and essentially caused her to run away and never to be heard from again. If it was you, don't you think you would have run away? I mean, who likes being made fun of? <laughs> People don't make fun of me. To your face. What? Chris, we made her look so stupid in front of all of her friends and the guy she liked. I can't imagine doing anything worse to somebody. freaked out too, but if Sam's down there all alone with a maniac and we leave, we're basically killing her ourselves. God damn it. Ashley, come on. Why are you always right? I'm not always right. Well, when you're right, you're right. I don't want to be. I want to leave. No. We've got to find Sam. Let's go. Chris, I'm getting a really weird feeling from all of this. What do you mean? What just doesn't add up. What doesn't add up? Any of this, the, the psycho, all this crazy stuff going on down here. I just, I feel like we've missed something. Something that'll make it all connect. Uh, I know what you mean, but I mean, <laughs> who knows what that would be? <sighs> yeah, I guess you're right. It's us.
I mean, what is this, like a fucking hit list? Christ. Oh, not good. Crap. Look at that. What? Might be Sam's. All right, let me see if I can get this. Yeah, I got it, but... Oh, damn, this thing is heavy. Be careful. You gotta come through, Ash. I, I can't hold it. Uh, oh, come on. Chris! Wait, to what? I think I just saw Sam over there. Uh, Ash, are you sure? I don't know, but come on, I think we should check it out. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure whoever's bleeding came through here, okay? So we really gotta get moving, like, now. Sam's clothes. It's just sick. I'd say this is just sick. So the psycho has been down here for sure. Do you think he's still down here? I hope not. Why is this thing even here? Million dollar question. She's not, she's not, she's not dead. How do you know? She's still breathing. What the hell is wrong? She's been knocked out. Oh, oh no, 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 no. This is bad, this is bad. We've got to get her out of here. Oh, oh shit! No, get up! Off. 
<laughs> what is this? This is, oh, Chris. this is the guy who killed Josh. <laughs> around it and now i mean we've wasted everything Actually, none of it was wasted what do you mean every second that i spent with you was the only thing i ever wanted to do with my time <laughs> what are you saying chris I'm sorry I, I should have told you how i felt god chris Ashley, no. i swear when we get out of this oh god <laughs> Ashley, I'll get you out of this. I won't let you die. Hello there, my special little subjects. Oh, shit. Don't be scared. Oh, you should be, Ash. Because here's the twist. Chris has made one fatal choice already today. And now, he must make another. Chris, you can take that gun in front of you and shoot Ashley. Or you can shoot yourself. Whoever is left can live. The choice is yours. <laughs> Don't be so silly, Chris. Oh, oh God. <laughs> to play God in these people's lives. What makes you so special then? Huh? You're sick! You're a sick fuck! Now what the hell have you done for them? Huh? What the hell have you done to them? Psychopath. Psychopath! Wow, this is weird. Hey! Guys, come on! Hello? Sam? Oh, God! Chris! The choice is yours. No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hello? Thank God, we need help, please! Oh! No! Sam. Sam. Wake up. Mike. 
Go, go, go. I'm glad you found me. It's okay. It's okay. You're okay? I, I don't understand. How did you get here? How'd you find me? There's a fucking maniac up here on the mountain. Yeah, I've noticed. He lives in this, like, web of tunnels. I was down there trying to get out, and then I found this grate, and I saw you. Listen, this guy who you're talking about, he attacked me. He showed me these videos, too. And one of them showed Josh being killed, just ripped apart by this huge fucking saw blade. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on around here? There's a door here. It won't open. Can you unlock it from your side? Too. What are you doing? Well, actually, the towel didn't turn out to be the best outfit for fighting off killer maniacs, you know. Do you mind, Mike? Oh, yeah, uh, right. My bad. Okay, done. Let's put this thing to bed. I'm into that. What's that? Is that... crying?
God. Here goes 600 bucks. Better be worth it. I look great in that top. All right. Now we're talking.
weird. Really weird. On for fuck's sake. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Shit.
Matt's shoe. How did this get here? a year ago. What does this mean?
<laughs> Josh! <laughs> Josh. Oh, oh, very good. <laughs> Every one of you, you got my name. <laughs> and after all you've been through, good. Good, 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 good. I mean, how does that feel? Right? How does it feel? Do you enjoy feeling terrorized, humiliated? I mean, panicked? All those emotions that my sisters got to feel once, one year ago? Only, only guess what? They didn't get to laugh it off. No, 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 no. They're gone. I don't know if you noticed this, Josh, but none of us are laughing. Oh, come, 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 come. Why the long faces? Come on. It's good to get the heart racing every now and then, right? And race, they did. I mean, every one of you just pitter-pat, pitter-pat. I hope you appreciated my little phantasmagorical spectacle. I mean, <gasps> no detail too small. No happen? opportunity missed. It was such... A delight to play the puppet master to, to all of your Pavlovian panic. <laughs> and all that gore, gore, it was gore galore, fake bodies. I mean, God, that shit was expensive. And no retakes. Nope, nope, nope. Only double takes. Oh, you should have seen your faces. Hook, line, and sinker for every little stinker. <laughs> Josh, why are you doing this? Yeah, don't even ask this squirrely little runt. He's got no clue. He's out of his fucking tree. Well, he's definitely off his meds. Oh, come on, you guys. Revenge is the best medicine. You're done. M Mike, he's sick. What? Come on, you guys are all gonna thank me when you guys become internet sensations. Wait, what, what? Oh, you better believe this little puppy's going viral, ladies and germs. I mean, we got unrequited love. We got, we got blood. I don't think there's enough hard drives in China to count all the views we're gonna get, you guys. What are you talking about, you asshat? Jessica's fucking dead! What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. You are gonna fucking pay, you ah! dick! Ah. Guys! Guys, come on. Seriously, this is crazy, you know? Shut up. Chris! Bro! I'm not your bro. Where are we going? Where are you guys taking me? I'm locking you up, bro. What? You can't do anything stupid before we call the police in the morning. Come on. I didn't do anything. Are, are you serious, bro? Goddamn murderer is what you are. I didn't do it. Michael, please, just listen to me, man. I did not hurt Jessica. Are you insane? Like, 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 really? Do you not understand what you've done? I'm a healer, man! I bring people together! Not like you assholes. That's enough. You only see what you want to see. You're Stop talking! I you are ah, dude. Ah, it's not my fault. You suckers can't take a joke. Ugh. Oh, oh wait. Did I hurt you? Did you just you feel a little, little bit of pain mm. right now? I am so, so ah, sorry. Ah, stop it. Jesus, dude. Stop, Michael. I'm sorry, man. I can't tell you how sorry I am that something happened to Jessica. But I swear. I swear to you, I have no idea what happened to her. Oh, shit, Mike, this... Oh. I don't know, something feels really wrong here, man. Oh. Joking? I, I, I'm just having a really hard time that figuring out that he would, like, do anything to hurt Jess. I saw what he did to her. With my own eyes. This! This! This is her blood. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> ah! Damn it! <laughs> Not dicking around. Snarr. No. This is not how it's supposed to go down. You're just a bunch of bullies. You can't hang out a, a guy just to try like this, guys. Huh? Not like, not like you got the guts to really do anything about it anyways. 
I mean, I, I, I don't even know what you mean because I, I don't have anything to regret. Oh my God. Okay, tie me up now, okay. Stay still, right, man. Right, 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 still. Okay. Tie them up if they just wiggle around. Gosh, dude. I leave me a little wiggle room, huh? What does it take to shut you up? Oh, not so tight, okay? Not so tight, okay? Can't, can't wiggle around. There's plastic ties, that's where it's... What? In God's name, plastic is he talking about? Three this is hard to watch. You ever seen this kind of shit before? Oh, I've never seen him like this. Your money back. <laughs> shh, shh, everybody.
stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Chris and Ash. Chris is an ass. Ashley's a dum dum. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, I said you're a dummy, dummy. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, Ashley. Oh. Ashley, I'll get you out of this. I won't let you die. Oh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that you liked me. Stop. <laughs> You know what that sound is? It's the sound of never kissing Ashley, you pussy! Stop! Yeah, you know, you might as well let Ashley sleep with Mike. I mean, at least he's got some notches in his belt, you know? He'll treat her right! You're fucking pathetic, Christopher! I'm gonna beat his head off! Don't listen to him! Not worth it! Hey, Mike! Mike, 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 Mike. Mike! What? What happened? With Jess, Mike? You know what happened. No. No, I... I don't. I got a problem, Mike. I don't remember killing Jess. Jesus Christ. I mean, like, I feel like I, I would remember killing her, you know? She's so soft. And she's probably got, like, a really tight bod. Shut your fucking mouth! Oh. are the worst! What? Oh, come on! You expect me to believe you're gonna shoot me? Well, just, just, just a little meat tied up here and helpless. Hmm? Why don't you go back to the lodge? Make sure everything's all right. I'll stay here with this lunatic until the morning. Oh, sleepover. <laughs> hey, can we order pizza? <laughs> you sure you're okay? Yeah. The one I know everything's fine back there. Yeah, you're right. See you in the morning. Josh? <laughs> Josh! How does it feel? Do you enjoy all those emotions that my sisters got to feel once, one year ago? Only, only guess what? They didn't get to laugh it off. No! Nope! No, no, no! They're gone! Jessica's fucking dead. What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. And you were gonna fucking pay, you ah! dick! What happened with Jess, Mike? I don't remember killing Jess. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Oh, my God, Matt!
this is gonna be the way. What now? Let me in! Let me in! Let her in quick! Shut the door! Oh my god! Shut the door! 
Emma, Emma, are you all right? I didn't think that I'd make it. You were screaming bloody murder. Are you okay? You look totally lying. There was something. Where's Matt? Come sit down, sit down. Something's out there. Did you there. guys split up? A monster, it's a monster. Wait. What are you talking about? I said there's something out like there. Like what? Gosh, relax, it was Josh, it was all Josh. No, 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 listen to we me. We got him tied up, he can't hurt you. No, it was after me and it wasn't human. Hold on. Em, can you tell us exactly what happened? I, I'm trying to tell you. The cable car was not an option, so we went for the fire tower. And, and then there was a blizzard, and these deer attacked us. They just came right out of nowhere. You gotta be kidding. And one of them went for Matt. There's something else. I found this little, like, it, it was almost like a camp with these marks on the wall, and I think they fell down there. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think... They survived the fall, but something happened on this one specific day. What? And and the marks, they... There was a date. Last year. The day they disappeared. Listen, in in the tower, there was there was a radio, and, and I got through to someone, but then that was right when the tower collapsed. Em. You made it. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, Mike. <sighs> what about Matt? We're trying to figure that out. Yeah, and then there was this monster that was chasing her. I... She's all messed up, guys. Emily? Hey, Em? Whoa. Josh. Jess? It's not Jess. Sorry, man, but who is it? I don't know. We should check it out. I got your back. Good. Door. You ready? Uh -huh. 
You ready? Just do it already. Whoever it is is probably gone by now. I, unless you want me to take the gun. No, no, no. I think that's less good. You do the door. I got the gun. Oh, ha, ha. Hold on there. Hold on there, mister. Freeze. Ah, oh, what? All right, all right. Just take it easy, Grandpa. Okay, everybody, just calm down. Now, just move over there. Go on, move. Let me say what I came to say. I'm here to tell you what you're up against being back on this mountain. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with Hannah and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? Our responsible. You hold on to your horses. I don't take kindly to you kids coming up here to my mountain. Your mountain? Huh? I'm sure the Washingtons would be very surprised to hear that. <laughs> well, the mountain don't belong to me, it's true. But it don't belong to the Washingtons. This mountain belongs to the Wendigo. <laughs> Who? What's he talking about? What the hell's a Wendigo? Let's hear him out. Not like we have a choice. Now, I'm only going to tell you this once. It doesn't matter to me if you believe it or not. I got reasons I want to get it off my chest. See? I told you. He's guilty as shit. Guilty as something. Shut up, Mike. There is a curse that dwells in these mountains. Should any man or woman resort to cannibalism in these woods, the spirit of the Wendigo shall be unleashed. Oh, crap. <laughs> You're gonna need to find somewhere safe. The basement might be okay. Okay, get down there now, all of you, and wait. What? Why? For how long? Until dawn. Guys, I ran off and left Josh when I heard screaming. Where did you leave him? In the shed. Ah, uh, your friend will already be dead. No, no, he can't be. We, we were just with him. A lot can happen quickly on this mountain. No. I'm gonna go get him. You can't go out there, Chris. I'm supposed to be his best friend, and, and, and I let him down. No, he let you down, Chris. He let all of us down. I don't care. I'm going to get him. Then I'll go with you. I, I don't need your help. you going alone. It's suicide. Fine. The rest of you, get down to the basement. Be safe. And don't go outside again until we're back. You don't seem to understand the magnitude of the situation. Well, I'm going to get Josh, aren't I? No, I'm going to get Josh. You're going to help me. Do you understand? Uh... Yeah, I think so. You need to follow me and do everything I tell you. This is the end. You point towards the thing you want to kill. I know how to use a shotgun, man. No, you don't. What? How do you know? Trust me. I know. Hey. Come back safe. Come on. We need to hurry, son. I, uh... See you soon. So, so, so tell me, you're the expert on these things. Uh, what's, uh, what, what, what's a guy got to know? You just be careful. You follow my lead. So, how many times do I have to shoot it with the shotgun before it's dead? Well, you'll be shooting it a long time. You, you mean this thing won't even kill it? No, it'll slow it down. Well, how do you kill it? They don't like fire. I don't like fire. They fear it. And it can kill them. If you have to. See, their skin is like... It's like tough armor. Unless you burn it off first. It's gross. Well, what are these things like? 
I mean, are they just crazy unpredictable, or, I mean, can you figure out what they're gonna do? Well, they adhere to some pattern, like any animal, or human. You mean, like how? Like they've got schedules? Well, they only hunt at night. Oh. Why? I didn't ask. Any, uh, pro-Wendigo tips? Like if I rub garlic all over me, they won't be able to smell me or something? Oh, they'll still smell you. Anything like that? I can't see you if you're standing still. It's like toads. <laughs> Sight is based on changes of movement in their field of vision. So if I don't move, I, I'm, I'm basically invisible. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't recommend testing it out. Unless you have no other choice. If these things... Wendigos are or, or were human. Do they they still have some aspect of humanity? Oh no. Damn it, what happened? Ah, oh, he's gone. We're too late. Shh. Quiet. We gotta go. Right now. We gotta find Josh. He can still be out there. <laughs> First, the Wendigo. He'll render you immobile, and then he strips the skin off of your entire body, piece by piece. And then he keeps you alive and aware and feasts on your organs, one piece at a time. So the launch then. Yeah. Let's go now. It might still be near. so good up there right now understatement of the night chris where's the flamethrower guy uh yeah he uh he didn't make it no what happened the thing it uh, tore him apart right in front of me oh god all right these are all the doors yeah are you sure what are you looking for another way out mike look i really don't think that's a good idea we should stay put right here until dawn at least we're safe down here. Oh, yeah? 
All wrapped up like a little present with a bow on top for that thing to tear us apart on Christmas morning. People will come for us in the morning. You don't sound so sure. That is what'll happen, right, Em? Yeah, I, I mean, right? Well, you can wait. I'm leaving. Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's got to have it. Josh? One of his dirty little tricks. Great, great. If that fucking thing got a hold of Josh, then we're shit out of luck. I don't know, Mike. It's possible. What's possible? It may have taken him down to the mine. What? I saw some horrible stuff down there. I think it's where that thing lives, and... Huh. Em? What? Fuck it. I'm gonna get that key right from that thing's goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. And what is all that? It's, uh, that old guy's bag. Is that a map? <gasps> that guy was prepared for anything. <laughs> Not quite. What is this place? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. What is that? I was down there. It was horrible. You were? Some of them survived, but, like, 15 of them didn't make it. There was this reporter, and I think he figured out there had been some, like, big cover-up going on. I found these plans. They knew the mine was a death trap, but they let the miners keep working anyway. Michael, I'd like to maybe focus on how we're going to get the fuck out of here, please. I'm just saying, it's weird how much crazy shit's gone on up here. What's weird is that there's a tunnel leading from the lodge to the sanatorium, see? That's how I got back here. I saw this when I was down there. That's where it lives. Em? Em, what is... Huh? What is that? Ash. Em, oh my god, oh my god, it's, oh it's my nothing. god. It's oh nothing, no. it just it, oh no, it bit no, me and... It bit you? What bit you? The... the Wendigo. What? It's nothing, really. It's not a big deal. You okay? Shit. It doesn't hurt anymore, really. It's it's not that bad. Em, if that thing bit you... I, I know what you're thinking, and I'm fine. Are you? Yes. Emily, at least let us check it out. Emily, if the Wendigo bit you, you could turn into one of those things. Oh, that's ridiculous. He said it was from eating each other. Remember, he said oh, that. Is that how it works? Yes, it happens. If it bit you, you're gonna turn into one, and then you're gonna turn on us. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! You can't be down here with us. What? Mike! You gotta go. Are you kidding me? You're putting us all in danger. Like hell I am! Emily, you can't stay here. <laughs> Mike, just cool your head, okay? We don't know if it works like that. Maybe it's just a bite. I've seen what these fuckers can do, and I don't want to say it again. What is this? Guys, what are you doing? Door's right here. I am letting you do this voluntarily. Oh no, you're just making yourself feel better about sending me to my death since you know there's a Wendigo out there ready to rip me to pieces like it did with- Okay, oh my god, will you just go? Go, get out of here! Whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 Mike, calm down. You're- you're gonna shoot me? Like me? This is the safe room, M. <laughs> Please. It is not safe as long as you're in it. <laughs> not for us. <laughs> don't, don't do that. I'm really sorry. Fuck, I can't do this. Oh my God. You did the right thing. I hope you did. Maybe. For now. <sighs> Shit. Fuck, fuck. <sighs> Keep an eye on her. If you see anything weird, you guys know what to do. Yeah. No one leave. Okay? It's not safe out there. I'll be back soon. I thought that, that he was gonna help us. With a flamethrower, dude? Now we don't have a chance. No, guys, it just means we've gotta be tough. 
We've got to do this on our own. I don't know if I can. There's a lot of history to this. Um, oh, no, 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 what? no, no. What is it? What does it say? It says that the bites, it, if it bites you, it's not infectious. It doesn't do anything. Let me see that. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, so she'll be okay. It says what? You're gonna be fine. Fine? Michael almost shot me, is that he fine? He didn't shoot you. And this bitch almost let him. Hey, that's not fair, she was scared. I'm the one who's scared. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Emily. I didn't know what was going to happen. There's none of us know. There's no excuse, there's no excuse please, Emily, this. please, just try to understand. Understand the palm of my hand, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. We've got to get to Mike. Like, now. Oh, Joshua. You should have listened to me. Because of your choices, people have died. 
I don't know which is worse, actively triggering events that lead to someone's death or passively allowing a tragedy to occur because you couldn't lift a goddamn finger to help someone else. Remember last year, huh? How you left your poor sisters to die? You did nothing to help them. Paralyzed by your own self-centered fear while a real threat was closing in. No, it's all about you, Josh. It's always all about you. Your game has gone terribly wrong. And your friends, like your sisters, have deserted you. You're all alone. Can you feel how cold your loneliness has become? Joshua, why did you hurt them? But of course you did. They were your friends, you misled them, you lied to them, and you put them through a night of genuine horror. Let's hope that it's not too late for atonement. And that your friends, if they still are your friends, can save you from this terrible isolation. Long. It's not so good up there right now. Uh, he's gone. We're too late. Shh, quiet. Uh, yeah, he, uh... Wait! Don't move. Holy shit! What the fuck? What are you looking for? Another way out. Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's gotta have it. And what is all that? It may have taken him down to the mine. Um, what is the... Huh? This is the safe room, M. <laughs> Please. Fuck, I can't do this. Oh, you did the right thing. Keep an eye on her. I'll be back soon.
shit. Huh. What happened on the walls?
nothing. And my... Sometime after, the prospectors... Until a cave-in trapped the men and woke the... And driven mad. Murderers. Cannibals. Human flesh. and many hunts until one night a year ago no. I couldn't see you
I just need a pitchfork and a mob. I am Hayden Penetier, and we are here at the studio recording Until Dawn. My name is Rami Malik, and I play Josh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. My name is Antonella Lentini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name is Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew, Matt for short. I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. My name is Noah Fleiss. I am Galadriel Steinman, and I play Ashley. So Until Dawn is a story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year later after a, a really traumatic experience where I've lost two of my sisters, so coming to kind of get some closure in that respect. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters, and I think for just the story in general, it's, it follows the quintessential horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, I hope this was the right thing to do. What? You know, get everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have a 
a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals. And she's a huge animal lover. She's vegan. She, um, she is a pacifist. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist, but uh, she's spunky and cool. I know that she, I think, is, is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who, who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them, but she doesn't care. It doesn't stop her from being herself and that's something that I hope I have in common with her. You know, he definitely uh, can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner, but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends, Sam played by Hayden Penetere and uh, invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure. Jessica is, oh, she has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character that, you know, at school she, she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her and she's gonna use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how he treats his girlfriend, Emily, and um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. She really knows what she wants, and she manages to, to get that from whomever it is, whether it be Matt or Mike, you know, she's really driven, and I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris, and he is uh, what society might consider the nerd of the group. Um, and, and he kind of embraces it. Um, Ashley is, she's a little more serious than some of the other girls. Um, she's definitely very intelligent and, and thoughtful. She kind of looks at the whole big picture of things. She's not quite as geeky as Chris, but they connect in a lot of ways. Mike is like big guy on campus. He's uh, the class president who has some charm and has, has a brain. And I, I don't know, people seem to like Mike. He gets away with a lot though. He's he can be kinda kinda jerky. The fact that he, he really just kinda wants everyone to be happy when he wants for he's he's a people pleaser and um it's I can I can definitely attest to being you know that guy. I'm I'm always the friend that wants everybody to be happy and wants everybody to be taken care of and that's definitely Matt. But also, like, this character is just so fun. I rarely get to play the bitch, and so it was really, it was really fun to do that. The spirit of things? Seriously, what's wrong with you? <laughs> just trying to lighten the mood, Em. Don't be like that. Like what? The way you're being. You always get like this. I just think this is just the coolest thing to be a part of, and um, I just think it's going to take the world by storm. I really do. I think this genre is the wave of the future, and I think that... Um, once people see the potential behind it uh, of getting to interact with the drama that you're witnessing unfold um, in such a realistic way, um, that this, this is how entertainment's going to be from now on. My name is Will Biles, Executive Creative Director of Until Dawn. The first part of getting a believable facial performance in game is to capture topographically the actor's range of emotional expressions as separate versions of the same head. Every tiny nuance gets digitized and merged, effectively creating a model that can recreate every facial movement that the actor makes. Once the topography has been recorded, the actor's performance itself can be captured by using a predetermined set of marker points drawn precisely on the face and a high-def helmet cam wirelessly linked to capture devices. The camera is the small box where it looks like the microphone should be. It records in high-def the movement of the dots throughout the performance that will drive the expressions captured earlier. Unlike other systems, this form of capture is far less lossy because there are fewer interpretations between performance captured and performance rendered finally in-game. 
the audio is also recorded via two separate Lavalier mics attached to the helmet. It takes a while for the actors to acclimatise to carrying around the recording devices and the helmet cams, but very soon the shoot becomes similar to any other effects shoot or a green screen shoot. The actors in these scenes are only recording facial animation, but use cursory body movements for pacing. Wait, and maybe we should all stick together and find everybody and make sure they're all okay, so... 1-1, one, one, the year before the prank. Take two, Mark. Other than the other actors, they have to use their imagination for everything and everywhere that they are supposed to be seeing and feeling. Idiot. This is so dumb. From a hot so midday studio in Los Angeles to a freezing midnight mountain in British Columbia. Until Dawn has a dynamic, ever-changing story, the facial performances and the body performances are recorded separately with different systems. With the body capture, we use reflective bead suits and an infrared camera matrix system that drives the CG bone hierarchies in our character models. <sighs> These performances cover everything from character locomotion, scene-specific performances and stunt work, most of which was recorded at studios in Pinewood and Shepparton, near London. Anna! Hello? Combining all the elements Anna. seamlessly in the final game becomes a formidable editing and logistical task. Every variation, both physical and emotional, must be combined in these multi-edits. <laughs> Scaffolding props have to stand in for the sets because the hundreds of infrared cameras have to be able to see all of the reflective beads on the actor. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer on Until Dawn. The production design for Until Dawn started with the great teen horror script that sets the characters in a Canadian winter mountain lodge, being a contemporary setting with visual clues derived from classic films of that genre, such as Hitchcock's Psycho and Stanley Kubrick's Shining. The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualizing the world through the color palette, the lighting, tone and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environments and atmospheres change quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example. It was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior needing to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colours, tones and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern and shape, so that when they were lined up you could always identify them. The costume designs allowed a range of clothes that would suit them for the cold winter weather but also have an element of style and individualism so that the audience could look at them and relate, recognising themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cosy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right, well, it'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. My yeah. fire and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, we really brought the look and feel of the world together, and this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. 
A key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colours and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back again with an emotional effect. Guys, there's someone outside. What the hell? Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? Oh, it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. Hi, Larry. Hey, Graham. Hi, my name is Graham Resnick. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, sound designer, and uh, I started working with Larry Fessenden about 10, 15 years ago through my friend Ty West, who I grew up with and uh, have done a lot of sound design with on his films. And uh, he was producing Ty's films at the time, and uh, Ty introduced me to Larry. Larry produced my first feature, and we've written together on several projects. My name is Larry Fesenden. I'm a filmmaker. I, uh, I run Glass Eye Picks, which is um, an independent production company out of New York. We make indie movies, uh, a lot of scary movies as well. Um, and uh, I got a call to audition to write uh, this video game. And uh, I called my pal Graham Resnick because Graham is a gamer. And um, while I thought I could offer something to the idea of writing this multi-branching story, I knew that I would want Graham's expertise as a lover of uh, gameplay since I guess games were started. So, and, and, and just as a lover. That's and as a lover, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is why there's so many sex jokes in the, yeah. in the game. <laughs> there was one Italian website that did say the Larry oh, that's right. and Graham Resnick, the two lovers behind <laughs> Until Dawn. Come here. Maybe I know how to handle you, too. I am definitely ready to be handled. So um, I wanted Graham by my side. Uh, yeah, and we, we got the gig, and it was, it's been an amazing ride. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my God. She's taking her shirt off. What? Oh, my God. Matt, what are you doing here? Uh. Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. Hey. It's all Don't get out of hand, So in the game, the, the basic setup is that uh, a year prior to the game's start, all these kids had gone up to a, a ski lodge that was owned by the parents of one of the kids, uh, or a couple of the kids, and um, some of the teenagers played a prank on some of the other teenagers, and the terrible tragedy occurred when a few of them, uh, two sisters, ran out into a blizzard, and uh, were never seen from the game. <laughs> So now, a year later, uh, this is kind of torn apart, this group of friends. They've, uh, they've gone through some trials and tribulations in the past year. The brother of the two girls has uh, had a lot of psychological issues. And, and to kind of help him cope uh, and help them all get over it, they all return to the lodge a year later, back up on the mountain. And uh, the idea is to, to get over it, but... Um, the healing does not begin. Does not begin. <laughs> Yeah, and these kids are all trying to find themselves. They've 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 been through a trauma, but in general, they're just teenagers trying to figure out who they are. So they're all kind of falling into the patterns, the the stereotypes, the the characters they see on TV and in the movies. I think we were very interested in taking genre tropes and kind of making them uh, sort of refresh them. said it just be us this weekend. We're familiar with how slasher movies work. Uh, you know, most people have seen some horror movies, and we have established notions and preconceptions about the roles of the players in horror movies and how they talk and how they get killed and how they have sex. And to bring you into a game that way and then subvert a lot of those expectations is kind of our, our goal. They're haunted by some incident that happened in their past, which I think you pretty much figure out that that's going to have a role in their uh, in their interaction. <laughs> yeah, so I think what was fun was we take some sort of stock characters and we try to give them some shape, but um, 
at least at the beginning, they're recognizable in the um, in the way of groups of friends. There's you know the jock and the yeah. um, and the bitchy girl and the rivalries between everyone. And oh my gosh, um, and really fun characters too. Like these, it's we just had so much fun living in the minds of these characters through writing the writing the script. What do you think? Ah! Jesus! <laughs> you know, it was fun. We I think we were looking to get that kind of banter that you yeah. see both in movies, but also that you absolutely have with friends and sort of those inside jokes. And of course, as writers and as friends ourselves, we sort of developed little tracks and we try right. to give the characters that kind of vibe. Jason Graves, and I'm the composer for Until Dawn. I've been involved with Until Dawn for about a year now. Originally, I was contacted by Barney Pratt, the audio director. I think that had something to do with my lineage of horror games, and hopefully not the fact that my last name is Graves, although a lot of people seem to associate my name with scary music. One of the things that was really exciting about working with Barney and the team at Supermassive is they really wanted something unique for the music. They wanted the music to stand out and be a character on its own in the game. When I'm first starting on a new score, and it doesn't matter if it's film, television, or games, I always end up going to the main theme. Sometimes the developer or producer isn't even necessarily interested in the main theme at the beginning. I just want to do it for myself because for me the main theme is the identity of the game. It establishes the mood, the atmosphere, and the character of the music and how it's going to be playing in the background. And that's what we did with Until Dawn. That was actually my demo pitch to Supermassive Games. I put a main theme together, recorded all the instruments at my studio, and sent it to them and they liked it we actually ended up recording that exact theme all the instruments and everything live here at ocean way probably nine months ago and that's what we've been using in all the demos for the game and that's the final version of the theme that is the main theme that you'll hear on the menus and in some key pieces of gameplay seem to have made a name for myself in horror. And there's something about scary music, I think it's maybe the lack of rules. But the biggest rule in scary music is there are no rules, so you can do anything you want, and actually, if you end up doing things that don't feel like they would work out together, they kind of clash and it ends up being even more effective for scary music. So that's what really drew me to Until Dawn, was the textures plus writing thematic material that is interwoven with the scary textures. I haven't really done anything like that before. Usually it was just all, all tension all the time, and that's fun and it's great, but I'm actually at heart a very melodic composer. That's the kind of music I love listening to, and that's the kind of music I love writing. That's the kind of music I got to work on in Until Dawn. <laughs> Same thing. 